Well, hey everybody, it's me, Alan Warren, the RV wingman, and I am sorry. Uh, I'm sorry that I have to be doing this video again. You know, it was just over a week ago when I did another video. I talked about Camping World, and um, uh, in that period of time since the last video, as you know, things have gone to hell in a handbasket when it comes to Camping World stock. Now, I um, I felt compelled. I feel compelled to to give you this message. I know that there are some people out there that hate me. They hate the RV Show USA. They don't want to hear anything negative. I apologize, but I cannot help but share the things that I see. I'm hopeful that you will not try to cut up every single little word that the wingman says and try to listen to the spirit of the message that I'm trying to communicate and get across. I am not a financial advisor. I am not uh, some whiz-bang Wall Street guy. I'm an ordinary person, an old guy, that's got, I think, a pretty good perspective on things. And when I see something, when I see a future catastrophe, I believe I owe it to people that I care about. And I care about you. I care about the RV community. I care about dealers. I owe it to communicate, at least give my... Um, my thoughts and what I think is, is going on and, and more importantly, why it's going on. But I'm going to do something now that I've never done before. I'm going to give you the name, the one name of the person that I believe in my opinion, this is just my opinion, the one person that we can blame for the state, if you will, of the economic downturn in the RV industry. That person is Marcus Lamonis. I do not hate Marcus Lemonis. I do not know Marcus Lemonis. Uh, he and I have chatted before. On uh, We switched text messages, and he's promised me he was going to be in the studio one time. He didn't show up. Marcus Lemonis, in my opinion, is the, the beginning, the reason why we are where we are now in the RV industry. The RV industry is typically, until about 2000, what was that, 2010 maybe, uh, 2008 was not a very high margin industry. There were people that made money, of course. Uh, the dealers, some of them made a lot of money, but they weren't rich. There are dealers today that are rich beyond our imagination. Why is that? Is it just, uh, well, they're just really good at what they do. I'm going to tell you what I think and how this whole thing came about. If you can bear with me, it is a story Kind of like trying to explain the, the tensions in the Middle East. You can't do it in 30 seconds. But if you care, if you really care, you want to listen, go, that guy is a nutcase. Or, oh my God, maybe he's telling the truth. All right, so here's the deal. Um, I believe that the reason it starts with Marcus is that up until Marcus was able to sell Camping World to Wall Street, Wall Street used to never do the uh, uh, long-term loans, 15, 20-year notes on RVs. They wouldn't do it. I mean, unless you had some kind of stellar credit rating, they you know RVs go down in value. That's just what they do. Somehow, Marcus was able to sell to Wall Street the concept that, gosh, there's a pile of money to be made by consumers if we can finance these things for 15, even 20 years. Now, the people on Wall Street, they're not, in, probably none of them, but I would say most of them have never spent the night in an RV ever. What they do is they make money. They make a lot of money. They make money by loaning money. The banks make money by loaning money to people that will borrow it. When Marcus was able to convince Wall Street bankers, the Wall Street big shots, that people will, that they're not buying an RV, they're going to buy payments. Let's just sell them a payment. That's when it all started. So what happened was, I believe Marcus was able to sell the concept of not selling RVs, but selling financing. Financing, and the people on Wall Street go, hey man, that's a pretty good idea. We can make lots of money. We can get in on this deal. And they did. And we, the consumer who don't know any better, we bought this fantasy. RVing is cool. RVs today are prettier than they've ever been with more amenities than they've ever had. It is easy, as I say, to get intoxicated in an RV because we want to fantasize about how cool it would be. The problem is, here's the problem. When Marcus convinced the banks that they could loan these 15, 20-year notes on products that were not going to last 15 or 20 years, most of them, 
Marcus wasn't the only one that did this, okay? There were other big dealers, General RV, Lazy Days RV. When they started seeing, they went, oh my God, oh my God, we need to ramp this thing up. We've got the public out there, but, but back up. Before now, up until just a few years ago, when Camping World and Marcus Lemonis got all these people in deep, deep financial trouble, People would turn in their RV once every three years, four years. They'd trade one in, buy up, trade down, but they would turn their RV. Today, people are financially ruined. They will never buy another RV again. If they were burned by Camping World or the tactics that Camping World uses, a 20-year note on an RV that may only last 10 or 12 years, if they were burned in this industry, they are gone forever. That's something that the Wall Street bankers weren't even thinking of. They just assumed that every three to four years, we're gonna renew these notes, people are gonna keep extending them. It's just like a car. Nobody ever owns one, right? I mean, generally speaking. They didn't figure that, you know what? RVs are not the same as homes. They are a very uh, bad investment in terms of depreciation. They depreciate quickly and they will never get their value back. So these loans are out there, way out there outstanding when is the public, when are you, if you have an RV that you bought from Camping World and it's fallen apart, they won't service it. You find out it's worth half maybe of what you still owe on it. You're gonna keep making payments on it? I know you're supposed to. Are you gonna keep making payments on it? My bet is that a lot of people in the future are gonna say, this is BS, I ain't gonna make payments anymore. They sold me a bill of goods, I can't do this. Sorry, I'm bouncing all over the place. I'm trying to explain what I see. So Marcus was able to sell the concept that, hey, Wall Street, you guys can make a fortune. Let's loan these big, long loans on RVs. Wall Street said, okay. Then the public said, oh my God, I can buy that for only $600 a month? What the hell? I can get rid of my house. I can get rid of my apartment. And I can live in that RV. Manufacturers said, oh my gosh. We can ramp this thing up. We can start making RVs as fast as we can crank them out because somebody's going to buy them because we're not selling RVs anymore. We're selling payments. What happened to the little guy? What happened to the local RV dealer? It's kind of what happened when Walmart came to town, little small town America. I know some people will go, hey, Alan, wingman, that's called capitalism. It is, but it isn't. When Walmart came into some communities, the guy that had the hardware store, the beauty salon, the grocery store, they got crushed, absolutely crushed because somebody was selling a smiley face and 10 cents less a pound right down the street. And little America went away. And that's what has happened with the RV industry. These great mom and pop dealerships, people that gave a crap, that wanted to earn your business, that owned it, you know, there's a problem. Yep, we're going to fix it. We may have caused the problem. We're going to fix it. Those people have been destroyed or they were bought out by Marcus because that's the way he works. We gobble people up. We sell payments to people on products that aren't going to last very long. And then what happens? Well, late October 2017, Marcus was able to sell hundreds of millions of dollars of his personal stock that he had no money invested in and he became one of the wealthiest men in our country. And who lost? The shareholders. Have you seen what has happened to the stock prices? Not just over the last uh, year, but the last week. It's down to 750 or whatever. I, I don't even wanna look at it again right now. I'm getting emails bombarded by emails going, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen? To me, it is so clear what's gonna happen. And Marcus is going to blame Trump. He's going to blame, blame the weather. He's going to blame the, the, the tariffs. He's going to blame manufacturers because they won't get the parts out in time. He'll blame everybody except the guy that shaves his face. He is a masterful marketer. He wraps himself, he has wrapped himself in the American flag to take advantage of the people. I love this country. I love our military and first responders and everything about it. But when someone like Marcus, who I think has single-handedly organized, orchestrated the, the demise of our industry, an industry that I love, when he wraps himself in the American flag, it just makes me want to puke. 
I know I probably made some people mad. I'm not, that is not my intent. I'm not trying to become famous. I'm not trying to become rich. My wife, you know, I own a campground. My wife wants me to just stop doing this show, shut up and just retire, go to the campground. It's fun. And she's right. I feel an obligation to communicate with people that I care deeply about. I care about RVers. I care about the RV industry. I care about the little man. I care about the employees of Camping World that have been hurt by this. The countless people who have uh, put their money, invested into the dream of Marcus Lemonis, and they're probably never going to get anything back. The lawyers, 15 or so class, class action lawsuits against Marcus personally. The future's not good. I'm not going to tell you a day and a time when the world is going to fall off a cliff, but it's not good. Will we survive? I think we will survive, but it's going to be ugly. We as human beings, we like to live in denial. Poor people, me. Sometimes I don't want to look at the budget because I don't want to see what's left or what's not left. Obese people don't want to get on the scale because it's, it's, it's not pretty. But at some point, we have to get on the scale of life, I think, unless we just want to keep living in denial. I believe that there are 400,000, approximately 400,000 RVers that are out there in the market that will never, ever be able to buy an RV again, thanks to Marcus. But he's got hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm sorry. When his ad says, if you're not happy, I'm not happy. Do you buy that? Do you believe that seriously? Really? I don't. I don't believe it at all. I expect he's got, by the way, when you got hundreds of millions of dollars, you can pay lots and lots of people to go on hating binges and, and, and these um, attacks. And so I know I'm going to be attacked by a lot of people. There's a lot of people that watch this show that are bankers, that you do work for banks, that you have loaned Marcus a lot of money. And I'm concerned for you as well. I really am. But we are paying. We, all of us, are paying for making bad decisions because we believed in a man's con. I believe, I think it was a con. Marcus, you know, you got hundreds of thousands of followers. You can, you can refute me. Uh, I'm not trying, again, I'm not trying to slander you. I'm saying this is my opinion. This is the way I see things. I see that you were able to convince somebody on Wall Street, and you're a good salesman, brother. You are somebody on Wall Street that, hey, we can loan on these 10 boxes on wheels. We can loan on these for 15 or 20 years, and people will buy it. And then once that started happening, then he started going after the consumer. Instead of selling the RV, he was selling payments. Now, if I were him, I'd go, no, that's not true. You know, I'm selling the RV. Yeah, you bet. You know, with the stereo and the, the, the LED lights and all the cool stuff, you walk into an RV at an RV show and it's like instant intoxication. You just fall in love. Admit it. It's okay. I do the same thing. And when we fall in love, most of the time, and you old people like me will go, you know, it wasn't really love. It wasn't really the best decision I ever made. You're finding out that it wasn't a very good decision and you were buried by a man that didn't have to do it. So when everything goes away, guess what? He still got his money. You got your payments. You got that RV that may not last the full length of the loan. You got damn good people out there that have been run out of business, put out of business by the smiley face of Marcus Lemonis and Camping World. It's a sad deal. There's no good news here. There's no winners here. It's not like somebody's going, yay. I mean, Winnebago, Forest River, Thor, all of them believed. They followed. They, they were, they, gosh, how can you say no to money? But now they're seeing what's going to happen. The industry's going down. Sales are down. People can't trade in like they used to. What's happened? Let's see. We went from the retirees, baby boomers, millennials, Let's start selling to the Gen Xers, okay? Maybe we can finance 12-year-olds and maybe they'll buy our RVs. I know that's ugly, but we're, we're out of options. I think that the day of reckoning is, is soon, very soon to be among us, upon us. I want this industry to survive. I believe that it will survive. I believe that good people, that there are a lot of good people that are watching this right now that are going, oh my God, I don't want to hear this. 
I don't want to hear it. It's like going to the doctor and getting a bad report. You know what I'm talking about. The only way out is out. It's ugly. We'll be okay. The manufacturers, the manufacturers, yes, they've been burned. It will work its way out. Will people be hurt? Some will. Too many will. Yes. And hundreds of thousands of consumers already have been hurt. Many of them don't even know it yet. So again, uh, I do apologize. What did it say? 15 and a half minutes. This is a long tirade, and I'm not trying to wail on any, anybody except Marcus. Again, I think that if it comes down to one person, we have to blame one person for the beginning of this. It is Marcus Lemonis. Yes, the RV industry has gone through slumps before, but never like this. I don't believe that this is a telltale sign that, the, oh, our economy is going to crash down. No, I think that the RV economy, the RV industry economy is coming crashing down. And you can see it all across the board. And every time you drive by up and down the interstate, you see that great big American flag and you see Camping World, you can thank Marcus Lemonis, at least in my view, for doing what he has done to destroy for a very long time, an industry that I love and I imagine you love so much. So as always, I welcome your input. I will give updates when I feel so compelled. I do not wish the worst for Marcus. I do think that we all, karma's a bitch, as they say. And I think that, that the, the, as they say, the chickens are coming home to roost. I think with the class action lawsuits, I think with some of the things that I'm hearing behind the scenes, I think with what's going on in the stock market, it's going to be, uh, there's some ugly days ahead. Uh, I'm just glad that I'm on the sidelines. I'm trying to help. I am Alan Warren. They call me the RV wingman. If you look off your right wing, that way, I guess, I'm the guy over there on your wingtip trying to steer you towards the right people, trying to steer you away from trouble. I don't make all the right decisions, but I try to call them as I see them. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please post your comments below or call the the uh, telephone number, our voicemail number, and leave me a voicemail message. We may play it on the air. And Marcus, if you're listening, if you watch this, um, I'm not sorry for saying what I'm saying. I, I am saying it with, with an open heart. I'm saying it in, in an honest way. There's nothing in this for me. I'm not going to get rich if you go out of business or you go broke or whatever. I'm not going to make less money if you make more money. I just, I'm just going to be me. But I love people, I love the RV industry, I love what RVing can do for us, all of us, for our relationships and our sanity. And God, the last thing we need is, is somebody that's, that's uh, pushing that emotional button to extract money from us, to enrich himself and bury us financially. Okay, I'll stop talking. Post your comments below, give me a thumbs up or maybe thumbs down. Post your comments, call, leave a voicemail message, hit the share button if you would, get this out there. Uh, today is, what is today? Thursday, August the 15th, 2019. We'll see what happens. Thank you for watching everybody, over and out.